So a couple weeks back, I built a small form factor system inside of the iQnix ZX1 with a Ryzen 9 5950X and an RX 6800XT from AMD. And while it was working fine at the time, I eventually put it inside of the guest bedroom in my house for my roommate to use. And he games a lot. And as he was gaming, we started realizing that it was getting way too loud and way too hot uh, because there's just too much power crammed in that little case. So right now, he's, he's stopped using that system since then. And right now he's using Hotline 2, which has not seen much action in like the last year or so. so I'm glad that it's getting some miles on it, but at the same time, the desk that he's using that I set up for him is way too small for this system. Like, it's, it looks ridiculous, and I'm kind of worried that the desk is going to cave in at any second. So, we're going to be building him a new system today that I'm actually really excited about because I'm using a case that I've been wanting to use for so long. It's the, uh, well, let's, let's come over here. Before we continue, special thanks to Private Internet Access for sponsoring this video. PIA is the world's most transparent VPN service that never records or stores any of your data. By changing your IP address and rerouting your internet traffic through an encrypted tunnel, your online activity is completely hidden from your internet service provider, network administrator, and government sensors. One of my favorite things about this VPN is that it's 100% open source and all of their code is made available to the public, so anyone can just look under the hood at any time and verify that this is really one of the most secure and private services around. PIA also works with all major streaming services like Netflix, Hulu, Disney+, Amazon Prime, and many more, so you can access all your favorite content anywhere in the world. They even support peer-to-peer -peer file sharing and torrenting. You can use PIA on all your devices with support for a multitude of platforms, including Windows, Linux, Android, Mac OS, iOS, and many more. Perhaps best of all, just one PIA subscription can be used to protect up to 10 devices at the same time. So if you're ready for complete digital privacy, click the link in the description below and you can get PIA for less than $3 a month with two extra months free. That's 83% off the normal rate at just $2.08 a month. Start browsing safely and securely today with private internet access. Bum, ba -da -ba 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 -ba. The Motif Monument from Yule Beast Designs. So this is an open air chassis. It's unlike any case I've really ever built in before. Small form factor, of course, much more fitting for his desk. And uh, some of the builds that I've seen in this thing that people have done look absolutely incredible. So I'm really excited to uh, to be a part of that and, and uh, build something cool today. Uh, we actually have a pretty good lineup of hardware. It's not nearly as powerful as what he was using in the ZX1 or Hotline 2 for that matter. Um, actually, it might, well, in, in some ways it might be better than Hotline 2 because he's a couple of years old now, but uh, still a really good selection of parts. And he usually plays Overwatch, which isn't demanding at all. He's not streaming or anything. So uh, I took that into account when picking up the parts as well. For our CPU, I chose the Ryzen 5 5600X. We've got six cores, 12 threads, absolutely fantastic chip. I didn't feel the need to go eight cores again because he's really just gaming and not doing any kind of rendering or live encoding, anything like that. We also have a B550i gaming, uh, ROG Strix B550i gaming from Asus. Very nice mini ITX motherboard, 32 gigs of DDR4 uh, memory from G skill. This is their their fairly new Trident Z Royal Elite. Look at that. Look at, look at the design. So this is gonna be a black and chrome build, like black and sort of silvery chrome. Uh, and these sticks just look perfect. Uh, I really love the design on the side. And uh, we've got 3600 speed on these as well. We also have a two terabyte Crucial P2 NVMe SSD. It's just PCIe Gen 3, so not the latest and greatest, but it's still plenty fast for, for a gaming PC like this. CPU cooler is none other than the Noctua NH U12S. This is the AM4 compatible one, of course, and I did not get the Chromax version. I wanted the the, the actual nickel-plated heatsink to, to shine through and be a part of the color scheme. However, I did buy a, uh, a Chromax fan to replace the stock fan, so that way we're still getting the chrome look on the heatsink, but uh, we don't have to deal with any of that nasty brown stuff on standard Noctua fans. GPU is the EVGA RTX 3060 Ti. This is the XC gaming model. It's perfect for this build, I think, because it's, it's powerful enough to drive the uh, 3440 by 1440 inch display display that he's got in his room, but it's not a ridiculously large card. It's actually not too much wider than uh, a standard mini ITX board, which I actually kind of like. Some of the builds that I've seen in the Motif Monument have like these giant like triple slot or even quad slot GPUs in them, which I think just looks kind of funny. Obviously it's super powerful, which I appreciate, but I'm trying to keep things proportional more or less. So fantastic card, really excited to be using that. SF600 from Corsair. This is a refurbished model. I hope it works. That's why it's in a, a funky box. And then we also have uh, some, some cool accessories here. These are actually custom backplates, GPU backplates from V1 Tech. I've worked with them plenty of times in the past. They do a fantastic job. In fact, uh, their, their backplates are, are on Hotline 2 right now. And uh, they, they, we kind of worked together to create a design that was sort of similar to the uh, the design on the memory. So pretty damn on point. They did a great job matching that up. And obviously these are RGB. They light up and stuff. We can change them any color. I think I'm going to go all white LEDs for this build, but we'll see. Uh, so I'm really excited to use these. They gave me two different versions. One has a little cutout for the power connectors on the GPU in case it fits or looks better. We'll figure that out 
out as we go about the build. And then I also have some fan grills. I, I don't know, this is just an idea. Because it's an open air chassis and the fan, um, all the fans, or I guess the one fan uh, in the system is gonna be exposed. I was thinking that maybe putting a fan grill on it might be functionally a good idea. So, you know, no one like nicks their hand or anything, but also it might look cool. And I wasn't sure if I should go chrome or black. So I just bought both. And honestly, if neither of them look great and it just looks better without a grill and it makes it look tacky or something, then I just won't use them. But I thought I'd kind of experiment with them and see uh, what works. And then finally, sleeve cables from Cable Mod. I sort of designed these myself and I have not seen them until now. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So again, black and chrome color scheme. So I went with the aluminum cable combs, which look fantastic. It's gonna make it pop. And I ordered these with a custom length that's gonna be perfect for the motif monument, hopefully, if I did my measurements right. Uh, so yeah, those are the parts for the build. I'll put links to all this stuff in the description in case you're interested, but without further ado, let's build this thing. Okay, step one, uh, CPU installation. Well, before I do that, because we're using this Noctua cooler, which does not use the standard AMD mounting system. I'm going to remove these because I just always have that fear that in the process of doing this, if I already have the CPU installed, I'll just like gah and just end it, ruin it all like I usually do. So I'm gonna play it safe this time and do this step first. And even though this Noctua cooler doesn't use this mounting system, these brackets, uh, which I generally prefer because it's just less work. Um, it's a really smart design and it's super quick and easy to install this cooler. So CPU, which is over here, our beautiful 5600X. Such a great chip. So fast. Such good value. Boom. Just like that. And I think next we'll actually install the cooler before we do the memory so it's not in the way since um, those Trident Z modules are, they have slightly higher heat spreaders. And I don't want them interfering with my business. So let's do, oh, you know what? Before we even do that, let's just knock out the, the M.2 drive. This is the only time you need a smaller head than a, a number two screwdriver is with the M.2 installation. And I almost thought that I didn't have uh, a screwdriver to, to open this with because I'm at home. This is, it's been a while since I've done an actual build from my house but obviously I don't have quite the same set of tools here that I do at the office. So sometimes the, the, uh, the mounting screw for the M.2 drives uh, is already pre-installed in the motherboard and you have to remove it first. And sometimes it's not, it's a uh, fitty fitty. Two terabytes, I went with two terabytes. I was gonna do one terabyte, but games are just getting so dang big these days. And, and Ian is a quintessential PC gamer. And I'm sure he's gonna uh, enjoy being able to load more games onto this system. So just playing it safe with two. The head on this screwdriver doesn't really bite very well. Unfortunately, we don't need it anymore for this build. It's done. Okay, M.2 installed, uh, SSD installed. Let's do the cooler, which we're gonna need thermal paste. Uh, let's do the mounting part first. So we've got four spacers, one on each corner, and we're ready for thermal paste already. Gonna just use the thermal paste that came included with the cooler, because I honestly don't have anything else here at home. And that's totally fine, because this is, it's Noctua. It's, it's good thermal paste. And honestly, I love the fact that Noctua never pre-applies thermal paste onto their cold plates of their coolers. Um, just because, who doesn't love applying thermal paste? It's so fun. So before we actually mount this cooler, we have to take the fan off, because it is pre-installed. Plus, we're replacing it with the Chromax version anyway. So, pop this guy off, two brackets. Easy peasy, and now we're ready to go. Let's see, which way do I want this to face? Probably, eh, I guess it doesn't really matter too much, but. Oh, you know what, I'm done. I, I totally forgot that we have to install these brackets too. Wow, where is my mind today? Where's my mind every day, Kyle? I don't know. I was like, I knew I'm missing something. That was way too simple and quick. And I'm totally going against what I just said, like risking smashing the, the CPU, just stabbing it outright. Okay, but we're good now, and now we can actually mount the cooler properly. Okay, so now we can install our fan, our Chromax fan that is. Uh, we're gonna go with the black rubbers. Make sure to rubber up, kids. This is just to reduce noise and vibration, of course. And I don't really see any other color working out here. I mean, white could work, because we're gonna have white LEDs and stuff. It'd be cool if they had chrome. They have chrome rubbers? I don't know how that would work. I would imagine this is gonna be a really quick build just because of the Motif Monument's design. It's just incredibly simple. There's like no IO cables except for a power button. And it's, you know, obviously mini ITX, but you don't really have to deal with the, the confines of a, a small form factor case quite as much because it's just so open. So that should really speed things up. Uh, okay, this is actually a much longer cable than we need because the connector 
The connector for the CPU header is literally right here, or it's one of these. I think it's, it's this one. We're so close. This is the, the connector coming off the fan. So we really don't need this guy. I think they included, I think Noctua includes a shorty. Do they not? A short cable. Oh, it's in here, duh. It might be in the accessory bag, Kyle. Did you think of that? This is more like it. This is perfect. Absolutely perfect. All right, now we can install our memory. Again, we've got two 16 gig sticks, DDR4 3600 of G-Skill Trident Z, Royal Elite with the really fancy crystal on the front that lights up. These are really nice sticks. Oh, got plastic on the side here. Why does that never get old? These are fingerprint magnets though, I have to be careful. I am probably gonna ruin it instantly, but we'll try. One down. It's so unsatisfying when you do it fast. Actually, that was pretty satisfying. It's, it's cool either way. And two, click, click. All right, now we're ready for mounting this guy inside of the case, or onto the case. It's not really, can't really be inside the motif monument. All right, uh, let's see. Wait, hold that thought. I totally forgot about the fan grills. Fan grills, I'm forgetting everything today. So I, I think uh, what we're gonna have to do, if we are gonna install one of these, we can't actually screw it into the fans because uh, the brackets on the coolers are gonna get in the way of that. But we can actually use the brackets, I think, to adhere uh, the, the grill to the fan. So let's try it with chrome first, just see how that looks. That looks kind of cool. Looks kind of cool. Definitely makes it look a bit more industrial, which I wasn't really going for. So let's see what it looks like with the black. Yo, I think I like the black. I think I'm gonna go black. Let's let's do that. Let's see, let's see how well this works, if at all. So I'm gonna undo these brackets carefully. I don't wanna stretch them out. Aha, okay, I got one side. I got one side in. And you know what? I'm gonna remove the RAM. And by the way, the, the fan grill barely touching the ramp, or it's not touching it, but it's like a millimeter or two away. It's really close clearance. But as we say on this channel, barely is good enough. Ah! Dunzo. Yo. Yeah, that actually looks really cool. I'm digging it. All right, we got the motif monument on its side and we're gonna just dive right in. We got pre-installed standoffs. Oh, IO shield. Does this case actually support an IO shield? Does this pop in? It does nice 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 let's see if this aligns oops sorry oh yeah that's that's perfect that's perfection right there nice cnc work there yule beast much appreciated so so we've got some options here we've got black screws or silver screws i'm gonna go silver because it's black and chrome build why not oh how i wish i had my ifixit kit right now building an entire pc with an allen wrench sounds like hell i think the only thing worse than that would be like a i don't know swiss army knife Okay, solid. Power supplies, or <laughs> motherboard, is installed. Are we already ready for the graphics card? My. Oh, you know what, before we do that, why don't we go ahead and put the feet on the case? There are four included feet, little adhesive feet, so we don't scratch up the desk in Ian's room. I don't even realize there was stuff down here. Yule Beast Designs Motif Monument, lot number nine, unit number 70. Cool, seems so exclusive when it's handwritten. All right, feet sees installed. I shouldn't call it feetsies. It sounds too similar to feces. All right, so we've got our EVGA RTX 3060 Ti XC Gaming, and it's got no shortage of plastic wrap on it. Now let's see. I think we just go for it, right? Again, I promise, I have been reading the manual. I've just been very forgetful. And the manual is only like one page. I mean, it's several pages, but the actual assembly part is like a single page. It's that simple. Leave it to me to screw it up. Using another silver screw here. This is gonna be a lot more noticeable just because contrast and its location, it's kind of just standing alone here. And yeah, that looks good. GPU installed, okay. Uh, I think it's just a matter of power supply and cables. And we're pretty much good to go. All right, it's cable time. And uh, for the record, our power supply, our refurbished unit doesn't look too bad. Some fingerprints on it, kinda. You know, I guess it's sort of expected, but it's not dinged up. There's no scratches, particularly the most important side that's gonna be showing looks really clean. So happy about that. Uh, let's go ahead and connect 24 pin ATX coming in hot. Also really glad that uh, the GPU I chose only has a single eight pin power connector. That making me happy. And not a single peripheral cable. That is also cool. Ugh. Obviously it doesn't really matter which way we orient this in terms of uh, fan orientation because there's no dust filtration and there's plenty of uh, clearance on both sides. You wouldn't be choked for airflow either way, but we obviously want the power supply sticker to be right side up. So this is what we're doing. And again, we're gonna use the silver screws. These won't be quite as visible because they're in the back. Sweet, ooh, it's looking good. 
Okay, now I think we're ready for plugging and chugging our cables into the various components, um, but we should also do cable management uh, around the back. Let's flip this guy. Oh man, this gets heavy. I mean, for how small it is, the chassis alone is pretty hefty as you'd imagine, just being pure metal. It's so metal, bro. All right, cable management, here we go. I'm just gonna start plugging stuff in and then we'll cinch everything down to this back plate here afterwards. 24 pin, I know you guys can't see, you know, like what I'm plugging in right now, but I kinda wanna, I wanna save it till the end. I wanna surprise you. No spoiler alerts, cause it's looking really good so far. Okay, so it looks like the cable length is Pretty good, pretty good. It's a little long, it could it could have been a little shorter. I could have made them a little shorter, but I'd much rather them have a little too long than a little too short. And then GPU, how does how do they usually route it for this case? Oh, obviously, they're just going through here. They're going through the uh, motherboard tray cutout, CPU cooler cutout, and then routing under. Ooh, smart, smart. Do I have enough cable length for that way though? Yes, yes it will, just barely. Woo! All right. Okay, and it looks like we can actually pinch this down. We can actually hold this down against the, uh, the motherboard tray here um, with, uh, with these included cable management ties. Cable management clamps, clasps, doohickeys. Anyone else get nervous when you're about to push down some super sticky adhesive? You know it's gonna be a total pain if you mess up. I think EPS is gonna look best curving like this from the side you can't see. This is a really fun case to build in because it's just so different. And for our 24 pin, it's interesting because this is the only other cable tie, the only the largest uh, cable tie um, that they gave, but it's not quite wide enough for 24 pin. See, it's like only maybe three fifths the width, maybe even half, probably just half. So I'm wondering, wondering if I should just like tie down half of it. All right, half of you guys get in here. The other half can screw off. I mean, it kind of works, but it looks good from this side. All right. Oh my God. I just realized I forgot the GPU backplate. That's okay, that's okay. That's that's super quick to, to fix. We'll just uninstall the GPU, we'll put that on. I am just on a roll today. My goodness, Kyle. All right, so before I put the back plate on, I have to thread the power button through it. So, first we need the O-ring. All the way down, all the way around. Ooh, that's a fun power button, very clicky. And make sure I've got orientation right. Boom, thread her through. Beautiful. And then we just gotta screw it down with the hex screw. There we go. Nailed it. It's so nice to just have a single cutout on the motherboard tray that you have to worry about. I don't think I've ever seen that. Okay, now I can sort of push these cables out of the way, get them where I want them to be, more or less. Like that, and that. And then you just kind of push this down. I think that'll work. Yeah, we got plenty of room. Silver screws, let's go. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. Before I mount these all the way down, or screw them all the way down, I'm gonna make sure that things are looking good up here. Yo, this is looking good. Okay, I'm good to screw the other screws down. Okay, cable management is done. So I'm just gonna un uninstall this GPU really quick and uh, we'll, we'll mount that back plate, get that sorted. All right, so the GPU backplate installation for, for V1 Tech is super simple. You've got these magnets that uh, have adhesive backing on them, and the magnets just go on the main screws uh, of the backplate or of the GPU. So I'm just gonna take this adhesive off, or the, uh, the adhesive plastic wrap heel thing. There's one. Come on, little guy, there you go. Two. Tres. And the final one. Okay. Uh, technically, the instruction manual says to put it on every main screw, uh, which would include this one too. But since it's a small back plate uh, with not much weight and stuff, I don't think we really need that. One on each corner seems fine. So now that uh, we have the magnets here and the adhesive face up, we can just fit this on carefully. Getting nervous again. Mm-hmm. There. Okay. That looks pretty good. All right, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pop this back into the, the case, wire up our single addressable RGB header, uh, or I guess cable connector to the, uh, the header on the motherboard, and this build is done. Before I reveal the final build in the Motif Monument, shout out to Crucial for sponsoring today's video with their new P5 Plus SSD. The P5 Plus features the latest Gen 4 NVMe protocol with sequential reads and writes up to 6,600 megabytes per second and 5,000 megabytes per second respectively. Enjoy quicker boot times, faster launching of your apps and games, and top-end performance built to handle the most demanding of tasks. 
If you need help choosing the right SSD or RAM for your system, you can also check out the Crucial Scanner, which scans your PC to help you find the best components that your system supports. To learn more about the Crucial P5 Plus, click on the link in the description for more info. What do you think of the build, boy? What do you think? You impressed? I will fucking destroy your bloodline! I know, you're never impressed. You're a cat. But, uh, boom, baby. Oh my God, it looks so good. Okay, uh, first I gotta address uh, the fan grill. It is magically turned back into chrome. That was a last minute change that I made since um, once I had it powered on and stuff, I realized that there wasn't really as much chrome showing on the RAM as, as I thought there'd be just because the 24 pin cable pretty much covers a lot of it. And it just didn't look chromey enough. So I made that last minute swap and I think it looks a lot nicer now. Uh, the back plate looks fantastic, all installed and stuff. I've got it going with the Asus Aura Creator. Is that what they call it now? It's not Aura. Anymore, or a creator, that's that's what it is. And somehow it, it actually it actually worked this time. Um, so the LEDs are kind of going off and it looks pretty good as well on the RAM. The, the RAM does look pretty pretty swanky, I must say. The LEDs on the RAM were super bright though. They were actually shining way brighter than the uh, the back plate, so I had to bring them down a little bit. Now it looks a bit more even before it was just too distracting. Uh, now it looks all right. But uh, yeah, I, what else can I say about this? Oh, the cables. The cables look so good, so, so good. I, I'm stoked how they turned out. Uh, and they're very, they're very swoopy. They're very swoopy, which I, I really like. Uh, looks good on this build, but um, yeah, why don't we go ahead and put it in Ian's room and see how it looks on his desk. All right, big boy. You need to slim down, buddy. Oh, God. Out with the old, in with the new. Oh, that is so much more space conscious. Hmm, I may need to get some like right angle adapters just to tidy up the cable management here. It's okay for now though. Bum ba da dum bum 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 da da dun da da dun da 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 yeah. All right, cool. Uh, it looks fantastic. Honestly, couldn't be happier with how this all turned out. I'm super glad that there's so much more desk space for Ian. It doesn't feel so cramped. I'm also relieved to know that Hotline 2.0 is not gonna crush the desk and absolutely get destroyed. Uh, and uh, yeah, I don't know, what do you guys think? I think this was a really awesome build. This is such a fun case to build in. I know it's a little pricey, but honestly, if you think about it, it's pretty much in the ballpark of what you'd spend on like a premium SFF case anyway. So if you guys are interested in something like a small form factor and really unique and sort of just like a statement piece. Uh, the Motif Monument is uh, highly recommended, um, by, by my account anyway. So there you go, guys. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, toss a like. I'll just I'll just use the mirror this time. How handy. I should have a mirror in, in every room that I film in. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Toss a like on it. If you, if you enjoyed it, subscribe for more tech content on the way, and I'll see you guys in the next video.